Every single hour that goes by, over 1 million plastic bottles are recycled. That's enough to fill 16 Olympic-sized swimming pools, or stack to the height of Mount Everest 30 times. But how exactly does a discarded water bottle, squashed, dirty, and tossed away, get reborn into a brand new product? From curbside bin to factory line, this is the astonishing journey of the pet bottle. This is how over 1 million plastic bottles are recycled each hour in a modern recycling facility. Plastic bottles are primarily made from PET, or polyethylene terephthalate, a durable, lightweight, and crystal clear polymer that's used in everything from soda bottles to salad containers. Globally, we produce over 500 billion PET bottles every year. That's 15,800 bottles every second. And although many still end up as waste, the growing global effort to recycle them is nothing short of a technological marvel. So, how does it begin? The process starts with us, consumers dropping bottles into blue bins or deposit return systems. In some countries, like Germany and Norway, deposit laws offer cash incentives for every bottle returned, reaching return rates above 90%. These bottles are collected by trucks and transported to large-scale facilities known as MRFS, Material Recovery Facilities. These are the sorting houses of the recycling world, processing hundreds of tons of mixed waste daily. Inside a MRF, it's a high-speed symphony of automation. Conveyors zoom at over 500 feet per minute, carrying mountains of mixed recyclables. Here, PET bottles are separated using a combination of infrared scanners, which detect the unique light signature of PET, air jets, which blast PET bottles off the belt and into dedicated bins, optical sorters, which distinguish clear PET from colored PET for better product uniformity, manual quality checks, with workers removing any non-recyclable or contaminated items missed by machines. This isn't just sorting. It's precise engineering. Once sorted, the PET bottles move to industrial shredders, massive machines with spinning steel teeth that slice them into flakes the size of corn kernels. These machines can process over 10,000 pounds of plastic per hour. Why shred them? Smaller pieces are easier to clean, melt, and transform. But cleanliness is key. The shredded flakes are now washed, thoroughly. This includes hot water baths at 85 to 90 degrees Celsius to dissolve sugary residues and oils, detergent scrubs to remove adhesives from labels, float sink tanks where plastic types are separated by density, pet sinks, polyethylene caps and label films float. Contamination is the enemy. Even 1% impurity can ruin a batch meant for food grade products. After rinsing, the flakes are air-dried using hot air turbines and then pass through air classifiers. These machines use powerful streams of air to lift off lightweight materials and dust, leaving only clean, heavy PET behind. This cleaned PET is now called Post-Consumer Recycled PET, or PCR PET. Next comes extrusion. Flakes are heated to over 270 degrees Celsius hot enough to turn plastic into a viscous, honey-like liquid. This molten PET is filtered for microscopic impurities, then forced through precision dyes to form long plastic spaghetti. A spinning blade chops these strands into uniform pellets. These pellets, each smaller than a pencil eraser, are the building blocks for new products. They're cooled, dried, and bagged for transport. But they're not all equal yet. To meet food-grade standards, the pellets undergo solid-state polymerization, SSP. This means slowly reheating them in a vacuum to rebuild the molecular chains damaged during use and melting. The result, strength and durability nearly identical to virgin plastic. Some facilities take it further with chemical recycling, where PET is chemically broken into its original monomers, terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol, and then rebuilt. This depolymerization creates plastic so pure, it's indistinguishable from never used plastic, even from dirty or mixed colored waste. Now, these purified RPET pellets head to bottle plants. Inside these plants, 
high-speed injection machines melt the pellets and mold them into pre-forms, thick, test-tube-like cylinders that resemble tiny bottles. These preforms are cooled and stored, then reheated and stretch blow molded into full size bottles using high pressure air. A single machine can produce up to 72,000 bottles per hour. That's 1,200 every minute. Just one facility can churn out more bottles in a day than there are people in New York City. But not all RPET becomes bottles. Some pellets head to textile factories where they're melted and extruded into polyester fibers. These are spun into yarns and woven into fabrics for t-shirts, jackets, backpacks, carpeting, and more. It takes just 10 bottles to make a shirt and 114 for a sleeping bag. Major brands like Patagonia and Adidas use RPET in their clothing lines. Even high-end fashion designers are turning trash into couture. Other uses include food trays and clamshell containers, 3D printing filament, automotive interiors, insulation material. It's a full circle transformation from bottle to wearable to industrial component. This entire system isn't just efficient, it's essential. Recycling PET reduces greenhouse gas emissions by up to 65% compared to making new plastic. Producing RPET uses 79% less energy and saves up to 3,000 pounds of CO2 per ton recycled. Each ton also spares nearly 7.5 cubic yards of landfill space. Right now, factories recycle over 1 million bottles per hour. That's over 8.8 .8 billion bottles per year. And with demand for RPET skyrocketing, some countries are building mega facilities capable of processing 100,000 tons annually but there's still a long way to go. Globally, only about 30% of PET bottles are recycled. The rest? They end up incinerated, buried, or floating in the ocean, where a single bottle can take 450 years to break down. That's why technology is stepping in. AI-driven smart bins, robotic sorters, and blockchain-based deposit systems are being tested worldwide. Cities like San Francisco and Amsterdam are rolling out pilot programs to make recycling seamless, rewarding, and near-automatic. And legislation is following suit. The EU now requires all plastic bottles to contain at least 25% recycled content by 2025. California mandates 50% by 2030. So next time you finish a bottle of soda, don't think of it as trash. Think of it as raw material for your next t-shirt or your shoes, or even the next bottle in your fridge. From discarded waste to rebirth in under 48 hours, the recycling of plastic bottles is a story of innovation, engineering, and hope. It's not just smart, it's essential. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this look into the world of modern recycling, hit like, subscribe, and tell us in the comments what industry you'd like us to explore next. You might just see your idea in the next video. Every bottle counts. Every action matters. Recycling plastic might feel like a modern phenomenon, but the roots go back to the 1970s oil crisis. As oil prices spiked, industries searched for ways to reuse existing plastics. The first recycling symbol, the Chasing Arrows Triangle, was introduced in 1970 during the first Earth Day. But back then, only a few types of plastics could be processed, and contamination rates were high. PET revolutionized the industry. Introduced in the early 1970s, PET became the go-to material for soft drink bottles by the 1980s. Its ability to be endlessly recycled with minimal degradation made it a cornerstone of modern plastic recycling. Today, nations like Japan recycle over 85% of their PET bottles, thanks to rigorous sorting systems and strong public awareness. Meanwhile, innovative startups in Kenya and India are turning pet waste into durable building bricks and road surfaces, combining recycling with critical infrastructure needs. Let's zoom in on one of the most advanced facilities in the world, the Loop Industries plant in Canada. This factory specializes in chemical recycling, depolymerizing pet waste, including dirty and colored bottles, into its purest molecular components. This means even plastic previously deemed non-recyclable can now be processed. In Europe, companies like Indorama Ventures 
operate mega facilities that combine mechanical and chemical recycling under one roof. These plants run 24 7 and can process hundreds of tons of PET daily. Some use closed loop water systems that recycle their wash water, reducing environmental impact even further. Others are powered by renewable energy, making the process as green as the products they produce. Consider this every single minute, over 1 million plastic bottles are purchased around the world. That's over 525 billion bottles every year. Yet, only 9% of all plastic ever produced has been recycled. The rest? It's either burned, buried, or polluting the planet. Entire islands of plastic, like the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, float in our oceans, home to more than 1.8 trillion plastic fragments. These fragments break down into microplastics, which have now been found in fish, table salt, and even the air we breathe. Recycling 1 million bottles per hour isn't just a statistic, it's a frontline defense against a global ecological crisis. But to truly turn the tide, we need more than factories. We need smarter design, stronger policies, and collective participation. Across the globe, grassroots movements are making waves. In Indonesia, the plastic bank turns waste into currency. Locals collect plastic in exchange for digital tokens, food, or healthcare. This model doesn't just reduce pollution, it fights poverty. In Brazil, recycling cooperatives empower thousands of waste pickers giving them formal recognition and fair pay for their work. In Rwanda, a plastic bag ban has cleaned up the streets and inspired similar efforts across Africa. These stories prove that with people and innovation, real change is possible. Recycling over a million plastic bottles each hour is not just an industrial feat. It's a symbol of our capacity to change course, to rethink our waste, and to reclaim value from what we once discarded. Each step in the process, from automated sorters to chemical reactors, is a testament to human ingenuity. But the true power lies with us. Because when you recycle a bottle, you're not just cleaning up. You're casting a vote for a cleaner planet, for smarter systems, and for a future where nothing is truly wasted. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video to keep the conversation going. And if you have an industry you want us to uncover next, leave it in the comments. Together we can build a world where every bottle begins again.